So if you look at the modern rockets, such as the Space Shuttle, the Falcon 9, and the new Glenn, you will see that they all use a liquid fuel system. But have you ever wondered how a liquid rocket engine actually works and how it produces the force? Well, this video will explain the liquid combustion process in detail. So liquid rockets work by mixing a fuel and an oxidizer, which are initially stored in separate tanks. And these, these chemicals are pumped into a combustion chamber in which they reach a high pressure and a temperature. The high pressure mixture is accelerated from the chamber by the means of a nozzle which I have a video on how a nozzle works and how it produces force in detail. Rockets contain what is called a turbo pump which is a device used to accelerate the fuel and to increase the pressure before it actually reaches the combustion chamber to enhance mixing. Combustion occurs very efficiently when the mixing pressure is extremely high. Before actually entering the combustion chamber, the fuel is atomized. This is a process in which you have a dense gas broken up into particles. So if you guys are confused by this process of atomization, just take, take a spray can and spray it. This here is atomization. It's simply gas being broken up into smaller pieces. That's it. Here is a picture of what happens inside a combustion chamber. First you have the injection and the atomization zone. Then you have the rapid combustion zone where almost all the liquid fuel is vaporized. Next, the stream tube combustion zone is the region where, where the velocity of the gas increases. So when it comes to rocket engines, they are what is called a thermodynamic cycle, right? If you're an engineering student, you most likely have taken a course in thermodynamics. It's basically a system where you have air or any other substance undergoing changes in pressure and temperature. And the cycle can be either open, in which you have some lost chemicals and lost gases, or it can be closed where all the gases stays within the system. Rocket engines work in the same way. And when it comes to liquid propulsion, you have three main cycles. The first one is a staged combustion cycle. In this cycle, the fuel is burned in stages and all the fuel goes in the chamber. This means that the specific impulse is very high and also you will produce a lot of force because all the fuel is used up and you can also fly for longer time periods. Examples include the Space Shuttle, the RS-25 engine, along with the SpaceX Raptor engines, which will actually be used to power the vehicles to Mars. The next combustion cycle is known as a gas generator cycle, and this is used in the Merlin engine at SpaceX and also the old J2X engine. Now in this cycle, the gas isn't very efficient because you have some wasted gas and also some gas is used for cooling. In this case, you have a process called regenerative cooling, which is used by SpaceX to control the engine temperature. Now this cycle is simpler than stage combustion because you don't have that many components but at the same time you will have a loss in performance because first of all fuel is wasted and second of all you don't have fuel burning in stages which means that if the stage is inefficient it will compound and this can cause a loss in force. But this cycle is a very old school cycle which means that it has been tested for many decades on end and that's why launch vehicles still go with the cycle now. The last type of propulsion cycle is the pressure fed cycle. Now this cycle is not very efficient and that is why it is used in small engines such as spacecraft attitude control systems, like a reaction control systems and like a lander. So, so, the, so the moon lander for example. Now the pressure fed cycle is a process in which you have gas pushing down the fuel and the oxidizer. The gas itself is at a high pressure and it just forces the fuel and the oxidizer into the chamber where they mix and they burn. In this case, think about it. You have gas mixing a different gas and pushing a different gas. So if I have air here, if I blow it, what's the guarantee that all the air will move, right? The gas can mix with the gas itself. So gas A can mix with gas B. There, there, there is no guarantee that gas A will push all of gas B without mixing it, no matter what the pressure is. And that's why the pressure fed cycle is very inefficient as opposed to a stage combustion or a gas generator cycle. Lastly, it is worth looking into the combustion issues, right? So think about it. Combustion is essentially mixing. It's two sub substances mixing into each other. Let's say you're making a drink and you mix rum and coke, right? So when you mix rum and coke, it's, there is no guarantee that every single particle of the rum will dissolve in the coke. Combustion issues can occur mainly because of launch vehicle vibration, insufficient mixing as, and also turbulence. Depending on the frequency at which the rocket is, op is operating, the stability issues will change. 
And this is why engineers spend a large amount of time actually designing the shape of the injector, the combustion chamber, the turbo pump, and they do a lot of cycle analysis to see what the best point is. And also, when you mix fuel, you inject it by atomization. Now, this can re reduce the full fuel velocity. And atomization is simply to encourage more mixing because the fuel is sprayed into particles as opposed to just being dumped in, right? And this will help. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Vinayak and I welcome you to my channel. Be sure to subscribe for more aerospace engineering content in the future. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next time. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.